read a very familiar text tonight from the book of Luke, chapter number 15. And I want to preach uh, what I felt like the Lord laid on my heart today. And I'd like to see the Lord help somebody here in this service tonight. Amen. I prayed today the Lord would just give us one of them old-fashioned Holy Ghost breakthroughs tonight. Amen. We still can have one. Amen. And uh, I'd like to see the power of God move in this building and deliverance uh, for the captives. And the Spirit of the Lord be great among us. Luke chapter number 15, beginning at verse 25. The Bible said, Now, now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. <clears throat> he said unto them, him, Thy brother is come, thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Praise God. I want to preach tonight. If the Lord would help us, I just want to preach to you from my heart a little while tonight. And I want to preach on uh, having a relationship with the Lord. Having a relationship with the Lord. Amen. We're very familiar with this text. It's probably uh, one of the most favorite texts, I guess, through the years that I've preached on. And uh, I just love the story uh, of the prodigal son. And uh, we read about where this certain man had two sons. And if we're not careful, a lot of times we overlook this elder brother. And we just look at this prodigal son that left home and went out in the hog pen and in the depths of sin and was wasted. And the Bible said, and we thank God that he made his way back home. Amen. And thank God for every prodigal that's made their way back home. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. But I want to <coughs> preach to us a little bit about this elder son. And having a relationship with the father. Now there's no doubt when you look at the prodigal son, that famed prodigal, that he didn't have a good relationship with his father. When we see people and young people that grow up in, in the church and in the, in good godly homes and they start looking toward that far country and they start rebelling against mother and father, and they start doing things that they know grieves their parents and displeases God. And you can see the distance begin, begin to come between father and son. And one thing I liked about the story of the prodigal son is the prodigal's father never let down his standard to get the prodigal to come back home. He never went after him and said, if you'll come home, uh, we'll make some deals and we'll make some changes and We'll adapt things so that you can live at home and do anything you want to do at the house. But he maintained what he had taught him all those years. I want to encourage you moms and dads, if you've got children that's lost or children that's struggling and looking into that foreign country, maybe they're involved in things that is a reproach and a shame to you that you don't want anybody to know what they're involved in and what they're doing. I want to tell you, hold that that line strong and straight because one day they're going to want to pray through and do right. Amen. And they got to know how to live and what's expected of them to please Almighty God. So he never left home and went down, but yet he continued to pray for that son. He continued to prepare for his coming. He continued, Brother Neil, to look toward that land. 
And one day, Brother Epsil Young, there was a great reunion that took place. The father ran to that son. And uh, oh, what a celebration began to take place. <clears throat> and that relationship that had been so divided and so distanced, amen, we can see them coming together and hugging and kissing and there being a reunion and a relationship put back together. But what I want to preach about tonight is that elder brother. This is the one that when we first are introduced to him, we find that he has been faithful to the Father's house. Amen. As far as I can tell in gleaning through this text, there never was a time of rebellion that's listed in his life. Whether he went out and sowed his wild oats, it seems like he was very uh, uh, set to please the Father. Uh, compliant is the word I'm looking for. If he knew something pleased the Lord, if he knew the Lord or his Father wanted something, then he went out of his way to see that it was done. Amen. But you see where you get and so many times when we come in and people get saved and start serving the Lord and living for God, amen, there, there is a desire to please God in their heart for the right reasons. But if we're not careful, we'll get the mentality that this elder brother had. He got to the place where he was still doing the right things. He was still working in the field. He was still, if he felt like something displeased the Father, then he didn't do it. If he felt like something pleased the Father, then he tried to do it. I feel like he tried his best to do that. But I feel like there's a danger in getting to a place where we get a servant mentality. What do you mean, Brother Steve? There's a difference between being a servant and being a son. Amen. A servant is one which does things out of obligation. Yes, I want to serve the Lord. I do have an obligation to Him. But I'll tell you, when it's in your heart to just be a servant, and all that's in your heart is just do it, because we know it's required by the church. We know it's required to be accepted by God's people. And we get to a place where our dress, our attitude, our actions is all based on what will the church think about me? Ah, oh, come on, help me a little while. Hey Amen. What will this one think if we do that? Hey Amen. But the problem with that is if the people change their opinions uh, and their ideas, uh, uh, then you begin to change. Uh, hey Amen. But oh, we need people that have more. Uh, hey Amen. Than just a, a servant. Hey Amen. Relationship. But people that have a sonship. Hey Amen. All oh, the possibilities uh, of, a, of a relationship that this older brother had. Uh, all the times he been in the house and all the times that there had been amen times he could have just sat down and talked with his father uh, and told him I felt uh, and bared his heart to him uh, you know that's a difference in when you really serve the Lord uh, as a son uh, it's when your heart is overwhelmed within you uh, you can go to him uh, and with tears you can kneel in his presence uh, and you can say hey, his brother uh, Tommy Strouder already mentioned uh, amen when he was there at the hospital and he went in that chapel and he said Lord I'm between an army and a red sea and I need help and you know what he said and the Lord helped me that wasn't because he just amen done A, B and C and he just was a servant but it was because he had a relationship with his heavenly father I thought about and prayed today much about people in our churches uh, people even right here in the campground tonight. Uh, amen. Yes, you come. Uh, amen. Yes, you, uh, amen, take part. Uh, amen. But there's something within you uh, that you don't have the relationship with God uh, that you really need to have. Uh, you go through the forms uh, and you go through the motions uh, and you know the words ever sung in the hymnal. Uh, but when it really comes, uh, amen, to getting on your knees in prayer uh, and talking to Him, and feeling His presence. Amen. It's not there. Amen. You know, one of the warning signs that you can tell that, 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 that the relationship isn't right is when all of a sudden news came that upset him that his brother had come home and that they were rejoicing. 
Amen. When he heard that news, his response was, he was angry. He was upset. Amen. Amen. Why? And his response when the father came out and talked to him, Amen. He said, Amen. You have never killed a fatted calf for me. Uh, you never let me bring my friends in and make merry and have a great time. Uh, you've done it for him uh, when he has wasted so much, uh, when he has been so far out. Uh, amen. Oh, uh, come on, help me now. Uh, I mean, I tell you, when somebody comes in uh, that's been lost and undone, uh, maybe an alcoholic or a drunk, uh, an adulterer, uh, and they come in uh, and they hit the altar uh, and they begin to pray uh, and tears begin to flow down their face uh, and the church begins to rejoice. Uh, if you're not careful, you'll sit back uh, and say, well, I struggle and they don't pray for me that way. Uh, they don't shout around me like they're shouting around them. Uh, but I want to tell you, uh, if you get a relationship with God, uh, amen, where you press past, uh, amen, what everybody says uh, and what everybody thinks, uh, and get your mind made up. Hey, uh, I tell you what I've been wanting to see uh, right here at Broxton this year uh, is a wave of the Holy Ghost uh, uh, to sweep through this building. Uh, it ain't going to happen uh, if all we're doing is just serving uh, out of obligation. Uh, but I tell you, when our hearts uh, is in tune with the Holy Ghost, uh, when we got a relationship with our Father, we can have a move of God. Amen. Amen. I remember being a young man. Amen. Getting in trouble in school one time. Amen. Got sent home. Uh, what do they call that? Suspended. I done, done something pretty bad. I got sent home. And, uh, my aunt happened to work at the school in the kitchen. And so she told me, I'll take you home. I'll drop you off. They'd already called dad. She'd already talked with my dad and said, I'll take him to your house and drop him off. And he said, tell him I'm on my way. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm on my way. And so, amen, I went, to, got to the house. I went in. I went back to my bedroom. Amen. And I got real religious. Amen. That's right. I went to calling on the Lord to help me. God, if you'll see me through this, He'll deliver me. Amen. I mean, I knew my dad, and I knew what was coming. Amen. He'd come walking through the door with a peach limb that he'd strip the branches off of. He'd come walking in. Amen. You know how I met him? I didn't cross my arm in defiance. Amen. And just look at him. Amen. Oh, that's right. You know, I approached him humbly. Amen. I started crying. And I said, Dad, I'm sorry. I mean, I was on up in age. Amen. I said, Dad, I'm so, oh, I done wrong. I'm sorry. Amen. I'll never forget. Amen. The different times that I received a, a discipline. Amen. And I knew I deserved it. And I knew it was fixing to happen. But all I could do is just say, I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. And I'll never forget. As long as I'm in my right mind. Amen. Man, he laid that peach tree down uh, and he grabbed me up uh, and he pulled me up close uh, and I just sobbed on his breast. Uh, amen. He held me a while. Uh, amen. Finally he said, son, uh, you know you deserve uh, a whipping. Uh, I said, I know, daddy. Uh, he said, I'm not going to whip you this time. Uh, I'm going to show you mercy this time. Uh, I want to tell you what a relationship is. Uh, it's when you know you're done wrong uh, and you know you're displeased. He's the Lord. He ain't going to throw you away. He ain't going to cast you aside. But he'll pull you up close. But he'll say you can have forgiveness. Oh, oh, oh. Amen. You see, you may have failed the Lord. You may have done wrong. But as long as you got the elder brother attitude. He got angry, and he would not go in. I preached before that the, pro, the, the father had one son, son come back home, but he didn't want to lose the other one. I mean, it ain't no good if one comes and the other leaves. 
Amen. He wanted them both in the house. Amen. So you know what he done? He went out to where he was. And he began to entreat him. And he began to talk to him. And he began to tell him, Son, you ain't understanding, Dad. This is what I heard. This is where your boy's been. This is what all took place. And you ain't never done all this for me. But he said, But son, thou art ever with me. And all that I have is thine. In other words, son, there's never been a time uh, that if you hadn't have come to me uh, and talked to me uh, and told me what you wanted, uh, you could have had it. Amen. You see the difference in a relationship. Amen. It's that you're not afraid to approach the Father. Amen. Uh, come on here now. I mean, when you're doing wrong, you're afraid to approach him. Hey, man, you're afraid what he knows. That's right. Oh, I remember being a child. Hey, man, I'd do something, sweep it under the rug, hide it. Mama would walk in and just look at me and say, what you been doing? Oh, nothing, Mom. Hey, man, oh, come on, boy. Hey, man, something's wrong. You ain't acting right. I wonder if the Lord could look down at us tonight and say, what's wrong with you? You ain't acting right. Hey, man, you used to work in the altar. You used to testify. You used to sing and rejoice. What's going on? It's time to get a relationship good enough with God that you can come to this altar again and bear your heart to Him. Somebody said the, the, the father went out with the two before and uh, straightened the boy out. I didn't read it quite that way. The Bible said rebuke not an elder but entreat. Him. You know what it said? He went out and entreated him. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. It's not God's desire nor will. Hey Amen. To cut you off. Because you make a mistake. Amen. I told him there at the church before about the young boy that I was pastor and he got saved. Been saved about two months and was doing good. Still saved tonight. Been saved for years. After about two months, one Wednesday night he came in my office before church. And he said, I'm through, Brother Steve. Amen. What's wrong? He said, I can't live it. Amen. What do you mean? You can't live it. He said, well, today at work something happened. And he said, and I let a curse word slip. Hey, man, I asked him, I said, how'd you feel about it? He said, I felt terrible. I said, well, after you done it, what'd you do? He said, I've asked God to forgive me. He said, but I felt so bad about it all day that it happened. He said, I just can't do it. Hey, man, I said, you know what the Bible said? If you sin. He didn't say when you sin. He didn't give you a license to commit sin. But he said, if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. I said, son, God ain't going to throw you away. God's not want to throw you away. You may have messed up. You may have had some problems. But if you could get a relationship with the Lord where you could run to Him and talk to Him and pray to Him. Amen. There's something about, amen, a relationship here in this text. And I don't know how it had been for months, but it's hard to me to see that father and that elder son walking shoulder and shoulder. It's hard to see closeness there. Amen. Amen. But you know, when there's something there that's that's bothering you, that you know that you need to talk to the Lord about, that you need to get straight, but you're not wanting to, you know what you do, you will avoid. Amen. I mean, if there's somebody and you know there's an altar that needs to be fixed, you'll go all the way around the building not to shake their hand. 
and you feel so bad about it and you feel so terrible about it and you're glancing at them right now while I'm preaching to see what they're doing. Amen. And you're trying to figure it out. You know what? There's something there. But oh, amen. You know, I think what really sparked it, amen, was when that man come out there and he said, amen, your, your son, your brother's come home. And the father ran out to greet him. And he gave him a hug. And he gave him a kiss. I feel like something within him said, hey, that's what I've been wanting. I've been going to church. I've been serving God. I just been wanting a hug. I just been wanting God to embrace me. And he comes in and he gets all this reception. Hey man, what about me? I want to tell you, you ain't got to be left out in this meeting. Hey man, you talking about revival. You talking about camp meeting. Hey man, if those are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost could get a relationship. Hey man, with him again. Amen. I feel like when he found out he got a hug, he meant something came all over him. He said, that's what I'm on. Amen. And maybe when he went out that day and he said, son, maybe he grabbed him up. And when he did, that elder son had been so hard and so stringent and so defiant. All of a sudden, he melted in the arms of the Father. And he said, Son, don't you understand? Your brother was lost, but now he's found. Amen. The lights start going off. He was blind, but now he can see. Amen. He starts telling him. Amen. He was dead. But now he's alive. Hey, Amen. I feel like in a little while they went back together uh, arm in arm uh, and said, Hey, uh, he ain't the only one that can have uh, a relationship with my father. Uh, hey, hey, uh, that backslider can pray through uh, and have a relationship. But not just a backslider. Uh, you can have a relationship. You can feel God again. Uh, you can rejoice in your soul. Amen. How many would like tonight just to feel the arms of the Lord coming around you one more time? How long has it been? Amen. You know, we can get busy and go through the day, get up early, leave, be gone. Amen. Come back home. Amen. Uh, rush down a quick uh, supper, rush to church, whatever we're doing. Amen. And the evening can come and you know, Sometimes what my wife will tell me, she would say, you ain't hugged me all day. Woo, come on here now. You know what she's saying? Hey, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't just something on your agenda. Come on here now. I want a relationship. I want some feelings involved in this thing. Uh, hey, man, hey, uh, I want to tell you, God looks down at us. Uh, and he said, you've been busy all day. But what about me? Uh, have you took time uh, to tell me you love me? Uh, have you took time to pray uh, until the presence of the Lord come down and envelop you? Hey, Amen. Relationship is a two-party thing. And God on His end is continually reaching and speaking. Amen. And doing everything He can to help us. But it comes to us tonight. Amen. Oh, as I said, I love to see this altar filled with backsliders and sinners. But I'm wondering tonight, is there some among us good, saved people? People that's been faithful. Faithful to the church for years. Faithful in the altars, faithful and given, faithful in so many ways. But you just be honest and say, Brother Steve, I don't have the relationship with God that I want to have. Amen. I don't have that closeness to God that I need, that I once had. There's something there. There's some distance there. And I want to close that gap. I want to close that gap. I remember 1995 when my dad passed away. And uh, I remember we had his funeral. And uh, we left the church to go to the graveside. It was about probably an hour's drive as slow as the procession was going. 
we was all in a, in a big van, all my, my two sisters, myself, and that's all it is of us, and their companions, my mom, was all the same vehicle. Just came from the last service there at the, at the church, the funeral service with my dad. We all got in the van, loaded up, and the, the presence of the Lord came down in that van. And the Spirit of God began to envelop us. You talking about a relationship? Hey Amen. When you're leaving the graveside and the widow says, with tears running down her face, that's the best funeral I've ever been to in my life. Woo! Hallelujah. When you're laughing and talking about how good it was. Amen. How great and anointed it was. How the singing helped her. How the Spirit moved. How the Holy Ghost moved on her. Uh, that's the best funeral I believe I've ever been to in my life. That's a relationship. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, I'll tell you what to make. Uh, Brother Tommy and Sister Betty. Uh, amen. What to make them. Uh, I've talked to them before. I've talked with Brother Tommy. Uh, you know what makes him say? Uh, if God heals her. Uh, amen. We're going to give him all the glory. Uh, he said, but if God doesn't win it, uh, amen, she's going to gain a new body. Uh, I want to preach to you uh, a relationship says whether you heal me uh, or whether I don't get healed. Uh, I'm going to serve you. Uh, a relationship says uh, if it turns out the way I want it, I'll serve you. But if it don't, I'll still serve you. You stand in front of the altar and you say, I do. And they say, I do. Till death we do part. And before years over, you're fighting like cats and dogs. And you don't even know if you're going to stay together. You don't look forward to going home. There's trouble, trouble, trouble. I want to tell you the problem. There's not a relationship there. Number one, you gotta have a relationship with God. And then after you get a good relationship with God, that'll help you have a good relationship with your companion. And you can stay together. And you can serve God together and go to heaven together. But you got to have a relationship. The prodigal son's brother, the elder brother, and the father goes back in. And the story ends right there. And so the rest of it, you just have to imagine. Amen. I wonder when he stepped into the banqueting hall and he sees his brother over on the other side. You see, not only did he not have a good relationship with his father, he didn't have a good relationship with his brother. Can I tell you, if you don't have a good relationship with your father, you're not going to have a good relationship with your brother. Amen. But when you get this relationship straightened out, it'll make you get this one straightened out. Amen. Amen. And I can see him as he entered, and he sees him across the other side of the banquet hall. Amen. I don't feel like he shunned him. I don't feel like he went and hid behind the, the tables and chairs. Amen. But I can see him making his way, Brother Dan, over to where it was. Those tears start flowing. Hey Amen. And all of a sudden they meet and they embrace and they hug. And from the depths of his heart, he says, I'm so glad you're home. Hey Amen. I'm so glad you're home. Hey Amen. Oh, to have a relationship with the Father. Would you stand to your feet tonight? I've tried to preach to you what the Lord laid on my heart tonight. And I want to ask you as we get ready to pray and sing a little bit here for you. There's a burden on my heart tonight. I prayed today. I said, Lord, get those singers anointed so much and just let the Holy Ghost sweep through here. We need that. We need a Holy Ghost interruption in this camp meeting. Because that, God, the Holy Ghost can do more in five minutes than I can do in all my preaching put together. I prayed, Lord, just sweep through this building. And I'm still praying that. Tonight, tomorrow night, every night, have the preeminence. Amen. But oh, the burden on my heart is this tonight. What about your relationship with God? 
Oh, I'm coming to church, Brother Steve, and I'm living holiness. But what about your relationship with the Lord? Amen. There's been people that look just like us. And they stood in our pulpits and sung in our choirs. And we turned around and the next day we looked and they were gone with somebody else's wife. And they were down back at the bar rooms and they were out of church. And we said, how could they go from preaching camp meetings to being backslid? They did not have a relationship with God. They were going through the motions. They were, they were singing the words. They were preaching the words. But they didn't have a relationship with God. I want to ask you, do you have a relationship with the Lord? We're fixing to give an altar call. And the devil already hops up on your shoulder and you feel like praying. You know you need to pray. And the devil hops up on your shoulder and he says, Don't you go to that altar because everybody will be looking. You know what? Everybody in this building loves you. And if I didn't have what I wanted from God or anywhere else I'd want to be, then right in the middle of a holiness camp meeting where they can lay hands on me and pray for me, nobody's going to look down on you. Hey, I've been in many a camp meetings. Brother Neil has too. When the altar call was given, Brother Tim, it was the preachers. Oh, God. <coughs> What about it, preachers? Is there a preacher among us that's I and got the relationship I need and want with God? Here comes one. Is there somebody else that'd be honest? Not to just come, but to come on business. To come and say, I need a relationship. Oh, God. That's Brother Chandler. I need a relationship. I'm tired of going through the motions and feeling like I'm not even saved. I want to pray through tonight until I feel Him hug me. And I feel the love of God embrace me. And I know without a doubt I'm His. And He's mine. For a relationship with God. What about it? I'm talking about a relationship with the Father. Oh, bless Jesus coming. Bless Jesus coming. Oh, I want to have church tonight. I want to have altar church tonight. Can we do it? Oh, what about it? What about it? What about it? Sister Pam, why don't you come let us pray with you some more if you don't mind. The Lord's been so good to her and spared her. Oh, I'd like to see her just get strengthened and encouraged tonight. Just let her feel the love of God and the love of the people. Amen. Come on, church. Is there another? Will you come? I need a relationship with God. I'm tired of going through motions. I'm tired of going through motions. Need a relationship. Need a commitment. Oh, come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church.